This is the NASDAQ composite. This is the NASDAQ composite with some lines drawn on it. This is highlighting that it is a rising wedge structure and if it actually met a measured move, everything would come to a halt. Now, when people think of the stock market, they often think of the NASDAQ composite. This index tracks over 3,000 stocks with a heavy focus on tech and growth companies. It's a great way to gauge the health of the tech sector and because of that, it tends to move quickly with market trends. Now, in today's video, I want to break down a couple of tools that can help you spot potential reversals so you don't need to be so worried about these larger crazy structures that you may see flying around on the internet. Hopefully, these tools help you find a better edge in navigating these rapid markets. All that and more on today's Stock Market Brief show. Let's get into it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. It was fun starting off with that little intro right there. This NASDAQ composite rising wedge dating back all the way to year 2000. And then the start point over here on the bottom line is from the bottom of the great financial crisis. And it is surprisingly meeting up very well. And you can see that price is getting coiled up in this tight little big, big little pattern. <laughs> I want to talk about some various ways of potentially finding turns because creating a trade plan on a pattern that goes back 20 plus years, in my opinion, it's kind of pointless, right? Can it play out? And if it plays out, we go back and you're like, oh my gosh, if I only did this, right? But there's a lot of movements and a lot of time that it can take for things to play out or even to go into a bearish trend. I want to start off looking at this chart that I posted on Twitter. This here is the NASDAQ Composite Bullish Percent Index. And you can see this is the NASDAQ Composite up here. This is the Bullish Percent Index. If you don't know what that is, it's telling you right here, this number is telling you the percent of stocks on buy signals based off of the tic-tac-toe charts, those point and figure charts. So right now it's saying that there's 57.34% of the stocks in the NASDAQ Composite remember this index tracks over 3,000 stocks or on buy signals so just over half now what I like to do is I like to apply an RSI to the bullish percent index and sometimes it gives us divergences and these divergences has marked out pretty good bottoms and sometimes pretty good tops so dating back here you can see or right now the reason why I'm bringing it up is because we are running into currently a negative divergence it hasn't played out but it is building now, if the NASDAQ composite pushes higher and this goes up further, then this would be completely something to ignore. And perhaps maybe it fills, files another one later down the road. But if I go back to the last negative divergence, it was over here in July, August area where you saw the bullish percent index get a higher reading, but the RSI got a lower reading. And that led to a market sell-off of about minus 13%. And it just so happens that the bottom, what happened? Well, we started seeing a positive divergence. Now, if we go back a little bit further, this one from this peak to this trough was about minus 20%. And you can see we also had a subtle divergence that was building there. And it started trying to find its bottom a little bit later on and with a positive divergence. So the thought process here is if we do play this out as a negative divergence, where would this potentially go? Could it be somewhere between another 13 to 20% pull down? That's always a possibility. But there are tools to help us find potential bottoms. Like I said, one could be very well looking for a positive divergence here. Another tool can be the NASDAQ McClellan Oscillator. And this right here spits out a reading. And typically when it gets below minus 60, it's more in the oversold condition. And when it gets above this 55, 60 range, it could be in an overbought condition. And you can see when we cross down through it here, you can see this spike in price. And then we ended up catching a little bit of a, a bid. Even right here, got a pretty low reading and that marked a bottom. Right here, marked this bottom. Right here, it marked this little bottom and then it ended up actually falling further. Okay, so it's not perfect by any means. Right here, matched this bottom. You got this right here matching this bottom and it kind of went a little bit this bottom and this bottom. And then so forth down the list. And then you can see it's also matched, you know, somewhat some, some tops right here. Boom, right here, right here. This was actually stayed rather elevated coming off of this bottom so anytime we have a sharp move to the, the to the downside and it's followed by a lot of breath we can be trading up in these areas so you got to use these tools in combination with uh, one another so this one's a good way to find you know extended runs and or you know sharp sell-offs to find potential bottoms another tool here is just using something very simple like the 5 10 20 timer and this is basically looking at the nasdaq composite and applying three different 
moving averages to it. I'm using the 5, 10, 20 EMA. And what you want to do is wait for them to all stack onto each other. So for example, in April over here, or March to, to May, we saw this sell-off earlier this year in the NASDAQ composite. And when the the five started getting above the, the 10 and the, the, the 20, where they started stacking on top of one another, that happened to be right over here. And that marked this nice big run up. And the same case was right over here too. We saw a nice run up and then they started crossing down from one another and stacking more negatively there. And then over here, you can see they started crossing down and it created some more bearish momentum to the downside. Now, this is obviously more choppy, but this is still a helpful tool to help you be on the right side of whatever the trend currently is. And I bring it up right now is because we're seeing divergences, but we are still up in a trend where the five is above the 10 and that's above the 20. So it is still technically a bullish trend. Another tool to catch um, longer shifts in trend is the old fool indicator. And this is utilizing the NASDAQ composite, uh, dividing it into the total put to call ratio. And then you apply some breadth EMAs, the 21 and the 50. And you can see there's times where they cross down through another and cross back up through another. Uh, it'd be a bullish signal to have the 21 above the 50, which we're currently at right now. We're seeing the market move higher. It's more bearish when it crosses the 21 crosses down through the 50. And you can see that it led to a sell-off, but then a rip and then came back down and so forth. And we didn't see a buy signal from this particular one right until this area. I forgot to put another buy signal right here, actually. You can see that we had a sell signal, it kind of chopped around basically. Then we got our buy signal right here and it led to a nice big a rally. So those are some of the tools that can help you navigate the shorter term trends. The one that I like to know when market conditions really change is the ones that I always talk about. Those were just some additional indicators, breadth indicators to help you gauge various things that are going on in the market from different perspectives. But the two things that I look at is the gamma flip line. And we're currently above that right now. And I like to look at the direction of the five-day moving average. So the gamma flip line is, in short, it'll tell you how dealers are going to be responding to price movements in the S&P 500. So for example, when we are above the gamma flip line, the dealers look to buy the dip and sell the rip. Volatility typically comes down. When we're below the gamma flip line, you get dealers selling into selling. They buy into buying and volatility typically increases. So we are currently above that level and you can see we're just floating around this 5850 level. That was an important gamma level overall. The call wall right now is at about 5900 and traders are reaching out further as it stands despite seeing some decent price swings in the last couple of days price action. The direction of the five day moving average is positive in the SPY. I will note that we did hit a high today getting into its implied move and you did see a negative divergence forming on this shorter term 30 minute structure, but we are still above that rising five day moving average and we haven't tested yet this anchor volume weighted average price from the prior swing high. Now the Qs got back above their five day moving average, but could not hold it and they closed back beneath it. So right now it's going flat to neutral. So tech stocks, you really want to see this recover to be more confident as it right now, it, it'd be a place to be a little bit more cautious from the Qs perspective. Small caps have been on quite the nice rip over here. They haven't tested their inclining five-day moving average or this anchored volume weighted average price from the swing low. And they are still holding, so this is still bullish. Semiconductors is about the same story as the Qs, no surprise there. And XBI did pull in a little bit here, but it's still above its rising five-day moving average and above the swing low anchored volume weighted average price and holding from the prior swing high, which is not on display here. So if it can still hold... This could potentially set up for another run if we start to see strength after its little consolidation here. The Dow Jones Industrial Average hit a new high and it's still above its rising five-day moving average as well. So overall, the market is in bullish conditions. We're coming into Friday. There's an option expiration. Okay, we got more news and more data coming out per usual. We're in the heat of the earnings season. So these are the things that I pay attention to amongst other little signs that we just previously discussed to understand other pictures, to see from you know a bird's eye view of what's really going on behind the scenes in these markets. The last chart that I want to go over here is the 15-minute time frame for the S&P 500. And I'm realizing that that's the wrong one, but this is the right chart right over here. So I'm going to go ahead and do this right now and put it on and walk you through what the implied move is. What is the market expecting as far as risk going into tomorrow? Well, the implied move for the based off of the VIX is 575 to the lower end and 589 to the higher end. I'm just going to call it 590. Okay. 
And when I look at the daily expected move based off the options chain, it's a little bit smaller. We got about 579 below us and 585.70 right there above us. Now on today's trade right here, you know, I don't have the daily expected move on display, but the daily expected move was right about here too as well. And you can see that we came right into that and then we started selling off. I mean, that can very well be the case. It's not always the case, but you just be aware that if you start your day, you know, on a big gap up into a daily expected move, you want to see how price consolidates first and how it sets up to see if there are other opportunities later into the trading session. So these would be the zones to the upside I'd watch. This would be the zone to the downside. We still have not tagged a weekly expected move. It hasn't tagged this week. It hasn't tagged the week prior. This would be the fourth week in a row. Um, like I said, I'm putting together all that data to just give more insight to the last time that's happened. But the last time we had three weeks without touching it, which by the way, 80% of the time this year, it has touched it. But last time we didn't touch it for three weeks straight was April of last year. And once we started going, right, this tells us that the market's in a very tight trading range. Once we broke out of that range, holy moly, the thing, we, we started rallying up 10% before it all fell back down another 10%. So big volatility, big moves are probably ahead. We got to be prepared for it. October is a typically a spooky month. You get big swings towards the back end of the year. You typically get your Santa Claus rallies. So we got to be prepared for anything to happen. That's all I got. See you later.